God. <laughs> it's, it's hard to, um, to thank because it's just, I feel so much. Um, and I get to drink all this wine. I don't drink good wine. Um, <laughs> it's really good. Welcome like to really really California. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, I was in Texas. There aren't so much, there's not so much wine in Texas. Um, so anyway, I'm going to try and just um, buzz through some stuff. But first, I just have to thank um, Tess and Holly, um, all my other readers, you guys for being here. I mean, it's, it's poetry you're here, and it's, uh, I'm failing. I don't even know what to do. Um, but just thanks for listening. So I'm going to read four poems, three first that are regular, kind of short, and then one kind of longish one. In the dentist chair. <laughs> In the dentist chair, Nancy asks me if I've been stressed as she digs a hook between my teeth. With her hands in my mouth, I gurgle and grunt as she says, you've been grinding. She scrapes a tooth and my eyes liquefy. She asks if I've been flossing in that way that lets me know she knows I haven't. <laughs> the blood I spit into the little plastic sink proves it. I tell her I flossed before I came. She replies, she replies not good enough and slaps a lead vest over my genitals. <laughs> Bite down. Turn your head. She positions a machine next to my face, turns the light off, and leaves. It beeps and clicks, and she flips the light back on, yanks the film from my mouth, holds the tiny x-ray to the light. She grips my jaw and looks in the cave of my mouth as if she's about to crawl inside. <laughs> Humming, she shoots a needle full of Novocaine into the softest part of me. I breathe loudly as she hushes me with an unexpected tenderness. That reminds me, there is nothing cruel or unusual about this. Mm. <laughs>
I want to tell you, I too know what it means to eat lunch alone at a big table, watching girls laugh, sip cold blue slush through thick straws. What it means to watch soup steam rise, to breathe it in, look for figures in the noodles, how it feels to force feed the last few golden mango chunks at dessert. Brian, I am not going to tell you how lovely you are asleep on your desk. <laughs> How one day, who knows, maybe you might turn into a man who looks at a boy sleeping in his classroom and instead of chastising him, wants to touch his hair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, just, just two more poems, one short one and one kind of longish one. Um, so when I went to Vietnam, I was really stressed and lonely and super scared. Uh, my first, you know, trip to Asia, which, you know, was totally fine and wonderful. Um, but uh, I went to, I tried to, to get a, a massage, a legitimate <laughs> massage, not, not like sexy time massage. Um, but I did research and I found, and I, and I found, I found a good place. Um, and this is about that. I never really had a massage before, so it was kind of crazy for me. Um, so this is called At the Vietnamese Massage Parlor. <laughs>
I wear it in the sunlight, in the forest, in the city. I wear it like a suit of metal, a suit of gauze, my face of abalone, of straw, assembling, disassembling, in trembling water. Allergic to a medication, my skin once changed colors. A dermatologist with a steroid-filled needle and goggles approached me. The scars on my back, now dimes of memory. My nerves cannot recall the pain they map, cannot open their mouths to tell me the story. Dr. Green wore black vests, had no skull. I could see the folds of his brain. <laughs> In her grief, my mother decided she was in love, went on a date with him, <laughs> told me how he kissed with his mouth open. <laughs> Waiting in my underpants in his office, I stole gauze pads, tape, a plastic model of an inflamed colon to show my mother how I felt inside. <laughs> It was hard to make her laugh back then. <coughs> his eyes, I really remember, sad like a horse's eyes, ringed with dark just the same. Dr. Chen quietly examined the surface of my tongue that one day in his California office. Laid out on a table, he touched my ankles, wrists, neck, with his starfish hands, at the bottom of his clear mug, a curl of green tea bled into hot water. Was it the tea I felt like, or the steam rising? He marked Chinese characters on a chart. I asked him about it, and he told me, even in English, I wouldn't understand. The first time I take the shot myself, I jab myself in the side of the stomach over an old wound invisible to me. I shake a little as I pinch the skin and wait for my body to finish sipping from the thin needle. The doors to my illness swing open. Air rushes through the hallways of my body, all the lights flickering on. From our bones, we whittle whistles, make music like a mallet to tenderize the sky, smudge with a thumb God's purple night makeup. We make music from what isn't broken, when we want memory to disappear like medicine in the blood. I want to smear ash across the face of memory. Send it out to play in the street until I need someone to talk to. Hello, old pain. So strange how you resemble my old face. Come inside.